Good morning, yogis. This is our 10 a.m. Monday All Levels Flow. We've got 75 minutes together to um, enjoy our practice. We'll be building some light and heat in the body today on this dark and rainy day. So for practice, our props today will be two blocks. You can also use books, a strap, or you can use a towel or scarf, blanket, and then cushions or a bolster if you have it. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin today seated. So come to a comfortable seat. I always like to start practice um, with my hips higher than my knees. So I like to sit on a block or a cushion to begin. So find your comfortable seat. If you like to practice with music, you can hit play on the playlist that I sent out this morning. Um, and we will go ahead. Begin. So let's just sit up nice and tall here and begin to get grounded. Feel your sit bones connecting to the earth or to your support. Lengthen the spine, maybe tuck the chin a bit. The gaze can be low, or you might close the eyes. Just spend a moment here tuning in. Listening to the sound of your breath. Noticing if it's flowing smoothly and deeply, or maybe it's shallow or staccato. Observe what you find without judgment. It's just acknowledging our starting point for today. And then observe the physical body. Our skeleton, our bones, joints, and muscles. Noticing what you find. Seeing if you can draw your attention to the places that feel comfort. So often we kind of default to noticing areas of discomfort. And today we're going to practice changing our patterns, our habits. And so we can begin by looking for comfort in the body. Openness, relaxation. And we can observe now our energetic body, our emotions, our thoughts. Just how do we feel today? Today's practice will be cultivating some light and heat in the body through twisting. And the intention of the practice today is to help us to twist out old habits and patterns and to open up to allow in innovation, newness, openness. And it seems fitting to have a practice like this as we head into our holiday season during the pandemic when the universe is asking us to re-envision our traditions. So how can we maintain that love, connection, and gratitude that we associate with the holidays and do that in a new form. So we're going to begin today 
with breath of fire, Akulavatsi. So to do this, we can begin by bringing the hands to the belly. You can keep the eyes closed or open them, whichever is more comfortable. Breath of fire is a navel breath in which we breathe a deep breath in through the nose, and then we pump the abdomen, pump the diaphragm to exhale and puff. So I'll demonstrate, or you can join me as we begin. So inhaling deeply into the abdomen, feel the abdomen engage and expand. And then we exhale through the nose, we'll do 10 times quick. Slowly inhale and let that breath go. So we can try this again together. Inhale, expanding the belly. As you exhale, press the diaphragm and belly in 10 times. Inhale, release that. You might release the hands to the lap. We'll do it again. This time, 20 breaths, exhale. So one deep inhale, expanding. And 20 exhales. Release hands to the lap. Close your eyes for the breath. And we'll do one last round. Deep inhale. Exhale 12 times. Push it out. Let's sit in stillness, returning to a more natural breath. Notice if anything has shifted. I notice my heart rate has shifted. And there's kind of a light feeling in my head. This breath is also called skull cleansing or skull illuminating breath. And it's known as a good way to clear the mind. We might notice if we feel any of that. So from here, we we'll begin our practice on our back. The physical practice at the Pranayam. Dropping down to the back, maintaining that sense of heat and light that we might feel after Kapalabhati. Let's begin taking a long body stretch, pointing the toes and reaching fingers to the back of the room. Breathing here, expanding through the muscles of the core, the legs, and arms. We can roll out wrists and ankles if that feels good. And then we'll clasp right hand over left wrist, walk the feet to the right corner of the mat, and make kind of a banana shape with your body. You might gently pull that left wrist to the right. So we're getting a side body stretch here. Head and neck are relaxing, shoulders relaxing. Breathing into the thighs. And then inhale to center, and we'll take it out the other way. Feeling a side body stretch on the right side. And then coming to center, inhale, bending. And as you exhale, draw the knees into the chest, curl up tight into a ball. Give yourself a squeeze. Really send love to the body. And then release the head and neck down. Plant the feet on the mat and let's gently tuck the tailbone and see if you can press the um, low back into the mat. From here, find your strap. We'll extend the left leg long, left into the front of the room. And we'll take the strap and wrap it on the ball of the foot, right foot, and press that right foot to the side. We're pressing the lumbar spine into the mat. The chin is tucked, so we're lengthening the spine, flexing into both feet here, feeling that stretch of hamstring and breathing. And then we'll take the strap into the left hand 
The right hand can extend long or come to the right hip. And as you exhale, draw the straightened leg across the body, coming into a twist. You can land the left elbow on the mat, so supporting your leg. You don't want to go too deep as we keep going back. The right arm extends long, that's comfortable, and your knees can follow. Breathing into this twist. If this is too intense, you can bend the knee and just clasp the knee in the twist. You want to do what feels good in the body, being mindful and listening. So as we begin to twist, what kinds of patterns and habits and we twist out. And what kind of new habits and patterns can we cultivate? Inhale the leg to center. Let's switch the grip and as you exhale, open it to the right. Just going to the level that feels comfortable. You can support your arm with the floor or even piling blocks under the arm. So if you have a habit of pushing yourself, always pushing to go farther, to meet goals, maybe today, instead of falling into that habit, you're cultivating a practice of stepping back, doing less, finding joy and ease. Inhale, coming to center. And as you press the low back into the mat, your left knee to the feet, draw the right leg gently toward the body, deepening the hamstring stretch and breathing. Release the strap, point that toe, and slowly let the leg fall toward the mat. From here, we legs in the spine, press the low back into the mat, left knee bends, and we wrap the strap around the left foot, the ball of the left foot. Flexing into both feet, the left foot reaches to the sky, ball of the foot presses to the sky, the arms are extended, shoulders relax. We're breathing here. On an exhale, take strap into the right hand and roll the leg to the right, coming into that twist, being mindful to go only as deep as the body wants in this moment, in this practice. Left arm can extend long or can stay on the left hip. The gaze can be at the sky or to the left. Breathing here, being kind and mindful to ourselves, thinking about any patterns of behavior, of emotional reactions, even patterns of speech that we might want to let go of to allow in the room. Let's inhale to center. And as you exhale, take the strap of the left hand and open to the left. Pausing when you get to your edge, supporting the arm and leg however you need to feel comfortable. Relaxing shoulders, relaxing the face and the jaw. And then we'll inhale, coming to center, release the strap, and draw the knees into the chest. Let's um, reach hands interlaced behind the chest. We'll bend the legs, and they come parallel to the mat, and we'll move through some yoga bicycles to wake up the core here. So let's inhale, lift the chin to the sky. As you exhale, twist the torso to the left, the right leg extends. Inhale, center, exhale, other way. Move with your own breath. We'll do six sets. When you finish, release the back down to the mat. Reach for the outer edges of the feet. 
drag knees to ribs for a happy baby. You can roll side to side, that feels good. You might smile or coo like a baby, opening up the hips and releasing the low back. From here, knees come together, we pass behind the knee, and let's go up and back three times, massaging the spine all the way from tailbone to shoulders. And at the third rock, we'll come to balance at the top in both toes. So the leg can be parallel to the mat or toes down. Arms can extend or support you, tend to behind. Whatever you do, the key here is engaging the core. So we're cultivating heat in the core, preparing for our twisting flow, lifting the heart and gaze. Three, two, one, got it. Release the leg down, let's extend that long. Sit up nice and tall and run drop to left. We'll engage the core lock here. We've already been working on it with our top of body and our core practice. We'll lengthen here. And as you exhale, reach the crown of the head to the front of the ear. So the arms can stay low, you can stay on the mat, or pinching at the hip to stay the back. So really isolating the stretch of the leg. Deep breath in, and as you exhale, maybe you can bend a little, pull a little deeper. One more inhale. Exhale, rounding forward. The arms can extend forward. The chin gently tucked. Breath is flowing. You can use ujjayi breath through that practice if you haven't already done. Ocean sounding breath. Sending breath now to the back body. From here, place the hands on the mat, flatten the back again, and we're going to rise up with a straight spine. So really engaging the core as we rise. Let's plant the hands behind the hips, fingers point forward, and we'll press the chest forward, getting a stretch of the pect pectoralis muscles. Breathing, opening through the heart space. And then we'll come all the way up to sit. Beautiful, Jane. Bend the right leg, sit up nice and tall, and we'll wrap the left arm and twist to the right. What can we let go of here as we twist? Inhale, lengthening the spine, feeling strong in our body. Exhale, twisting, feeling flexible. And then we'll come back to center. Let the right knee fall open. Sitting up nice and tall. <clears throat> and again, with the hands low, let's hinge at the hip and reach the crown of the head forward, folding toward the extended left leg. Breathing here, lengthen the spine as you inhale. Hinge deeper as you stand on the side. Inhale. Inhale in here. And as you exhale, soften and fold for the extended leg. Left leg is flexed, engaging the muscles. Feeling a stretch of the right side body in this twist. Janu Shishasana. And then we'll lengthen the spine again, hands are on the mat. Engaging the core, the root lock, and rising up to sit. Let's set that foot wide to the wide edge of the mat, or alternately facing the knee. Reach the left leg toward that left arm toward the left leg, and we'll reach the right arm out, <clears throat> gazing at the hand. Follow the hand as it comes up and over. Your gaze can be on the ceiling here. Or if your neck is sore, you might face down, coming into the side body stretch, reaching toward the extended left leg, expanding through the right side ribs, breathing, and then slowly rising up. Let's bring the left foot in, coming to Padakonasana, bound angle pose. Soles of the feet together, knees are wide. You can clasp the feet if that's comfortable. 
Let's drop the chin here, lengthen the spine. And we'll make some circles with the crown of the head. So as you exhale, drop the crown of the head to the right. Inhale here. And as you exhale, you'll move forward and to the left. Inhale up to the sky. Imagine just drawing circles with the crown of your head. Exhaling as the chin comes forward. Inhaling as the chin lifts. And we'll take it the other way. You can pause in any areas that need a little extra love. Again, can you find areas of comfort? So what in this posture is comfortable and easy? From here, we'll extend the right leg long, bend the left knee and draw it in, sit up nice and tall, and we'll twist to the left. Inhale, lifting the spine, lengthening, feeling our strength, exhale, twisting, finding our flexibility. Inhale, coming to center, let the left knee fall open. Hands are low on the ground, tip to fingers, and we'll hinge at the hips, walking those hands forward, keeping the shoulders moving back. Excellent. Inhaling here to put this flex. And now as you exhale, you can round forward, breathing into the back and the side body, feeling a stretch of the side body, left side. And then return the fingers to the mat, straighten the back in the pole, and then lift all the way up, engaging the core. Excellent. From here, we'll swing both legs around and come up to tabletop. So our shoulders are over wrists, hips are over knees. The core is drawing in, so it's an active pose. I'm already feeling some heat, maybe you are too. And we'll move through cat cow. So inhale, pressing the spine to the sky, tucking the chin, really making space between the shoulder blades. Exhale, arching the back, the heart reaches forward, tailbone lifts. Move between these two. How about four more rounds? And then when you're ready, finding neutral, pressing into the tops of the feet, pressing into the hands, engaging that core lock. We'll extend the right leg back, flex the foot and turn the toes down. And then take the arch out of the low back. From here, you can extend the arm forward and hold or take some um, curls. So we'll inhale here, exhale, curl under. Inhale, extend, exhale, curl, extend, and curl, extend, and hold. Three breaths, lengthening from toes to fingertips, feeling our strength and balance here. And then dropping the right hand, dropping the right knee, take a round of cat cow. From here, inhale the left leg back, flexing the toes, turning them down to the mat, engaging the core. Float the right arm forward if that's comfortable. Stay here or take the curls on the exhale, knee to nose, elbow drop in, extend and curl, extend and curl, extend and fold. Three breaths, lengthening, feeling balanced. And then drop the hand, 
Drop the knee, let's sit back, child pose. Hips to the heels, forehead to the mat. Resting here, this is our resting pose. You're welcome to come here at any time you need a break or you need to return to your breath. Find some stillness. On the inhale, we press ourselves forward, coming to modified plank. Exhale through a modified chaturanga, bending the knees, the elbows deeply. Chin, chest, and belly drop to the mat. We roll the shoulders back and inhale, pressing into the mat, more cobra. As you exhale, press hips to the heels, child's pose. We'll move through that again. That's our modified vinyasa, which you can take any time. But I do a vinyasa. Inhale, modified plank. Exhale through chaturanga, down to the belly. Inhale, the heart lifts. Little cobra. Exhale, child pose. Let's tuck the toes here. Lift the hips, downward facing dog. Reading our dog this morning. Pressing the heels for the mat, the hips distance, palms are shoulder distance, and we're pressing into all parts of the palms and fingers, rolling the arms away, so externally rotating to make space between the shoulder blades. From here, let's lift the right leg to the sky, finding a stretch in the knee like a dog, feeling the stretches of the hip. As you exhale, slowly, slowly come into a crouching tiger, and we'll hold for three, two, and one. Plant the foot on the mat, drop the knee down, and here you, you should bring your blocks to be nearby. You can bring one block under the left hand and one under the right. We're in our low lunge here. As we inhale, let's reach the right arm forward and up, coming into a twist. From here, we might circle the right arm, but that feels good on the shoulder. And then pause. And then reach forward, dropping the um, hands to the blocks. From here, let's bring hands to the hips and ride into our low lunge onto the upper. You can pad the knee if it's sensitive by doubling up the mat or using the block. The hands are on the hips to remind us to tuck our tailbone. We're going to roll the shoulders back. Lift the heart, stretch into the left hip flexor, breathing, three deep breaths. And then as you exhale, straighten to the right leg, return your hands to those blocks, and we'll come into this modified split, modified Hanumanasana. The right leg extends long, the hips are high, right hip is Holding traction in the back, left hip traction is forward, core is engaged, so we're not jumping into shoulders or hips. Three, two, and one. Bend into that right leg, remove your blocks, and we'll step back to downward facing dog. From here, let's lift the left leg high. Feeling the stretch of the left hip flexor. As you exhale, draw knee to chest and pause. Really lifting the core. See if you can make a cat shape in the back. So find space behind the shoulder blades. And then gently stepping that left foot through between the hands. Dropping the right knee back. You pad the knee if you like. Placing the blocks. On the inhale, the left hand reaches forward and up, coming into our twist. 
Breathing here, you might circle the left arm. Big circles. And then pause, big high. Finding ease and comfort. Reaching forward and down. We'll bring hand to hips, press into the feet and leg, and rise to our low lunge. Roll the shoulders back. Lift the heart and gaze to the sky. Onto the asana. Opening the heart. The opportunity for change and innovation. As you exhale, bring the chin and spine to neutral. Reach down for your blocks. Straighten into the left leg. Modify the split. Core draws in, the spine is long. We're breathing. And then we'll bend into the left leg, remove our crops. Unfold the mat, if you've got the tools. Plant the hands and step back to plank pose. So this is full plank. The heels are high and they're pressing toward the back of the room. Crown of the head presses toward the front and the core draws in. So you don't want any dumping into the shoulder. Engaging that core, cultivating heat here and light. From here, press forward with the toes so your shoulders come in front of the wrists. And as you exhale, we'll move into Chaturanga. Right angle with the elbows. Inhale, scooping the heart forward. Heart lifts, knees are lifted. This is upward facing dog. Exhale, lifting the hips, rolling over the feet. Downward facing dog. Returning to our breath. Noticing shifts in the breath, the heart rate, the muscles, bones, and energetic body. And then we'll look to the top of the mat, take little steps or lightly hop all the way to the top. Inhale to a flat back, hands can be down or at your shins. Exhale, fold deeply. Reach the tailbone to the sky. Curl the chin towards the chest. Let the shoulders relax. You might clap opposite elbows. Shake the head yes and no. And then we'll bend deeply into the knees, release the hands, and slowly roll ourselves all the way up. To stand in mountain pose. Good morning. From here, <clears throat> let's take a nice deep breath, take up space, reach out with the arms, breathe in the day, gaze to the sky, let's hold here, tucking the tailbone, lengthening the spine, connecting to the earth, and reaching for the As you exhale, bring head to neutral, drop the right hand, and then reach over with the left for a side body stretch. You might wrap the hands on your torso, sending some love to the core that's working so hard today. Inhale through center. As you exhale, we'll reach the right hand up and over, taking that side body stretch the other way, sending our core, our abdomen, all those layers of muscles from love. And inhale back to center. Let's bring the hands to the heart, lifting the heart. And as you exhale, twist to the right. The hips stay forward. Breathing here. Letting go of something that's blocking us. Something that's holding us back. 
And then let's expand the arms wide and see if you can twist a little deeper. And then we'll come back to center, hands to the heart. Inhale here, pressing into the mat, lengthening the crown of the head towards the sky, lifting the heart to the hands. Exhale, twisting to the left, hips stay forward. Letting go of obstacles. Inviting in ease and comfort. Extending your arms, maybe deepening the twist if it's available. And exhale, coming back to center, hands and heart. Let's bring your toes, bring feet and knees together. From the top of the mat, we'll inhale here and exhale, clinging to the top of that wonderful pose. So, taking the arch out of the low back by tucking the tailbone and reaching it for the mat, crown the head reaching to the sky, gaze on the ground somewhere ahead of your mat. Breathing here. On the next breath, take a twist to the right. Only go to your degree, no need to push it, be kind. As you inhale from the center, exhale, take it to the other side. Two rounds of breath. Inhale to center, exhale, fold. Let's step back to plank. You can move through a vinyasa or even down dog. If you're joining me, we'll exhale Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mudra. Exhale, Adhanita. Pressing into the palms and the feet. Feel the connection to the earth. And reach into the sky. On the inhale, the right foot rises. Like a dog. As you exhale, bend that knee, open to the right, knee to your right leg. And breathe. Inhale the foot high. As you exhale, draw it for your, draw the knee to your chest. Pause. Three, two, and one. Step it all the way through. Find your blocks here to plant under your arms. On the inhale, we'll reach the right arm forward and up, taking that twist. You can stay here or for more of a challenge, you might reach the left arm forward. Breathing for three, two, and one. Return both arms down to the mat. And let's straighten into that extended right leg. Pyramid pose. You can shorten your stance here so that the back heel comes down closer to the mat. You also can lift the blocks to their higher setting, but that helps you to keep a flat back. So what's important here is your flat back and core engagement. Track the right hip back, left forward, and breathing in. Let's reach the left hand for the front of the room for a moment, finding balance, feeling that pull in opposite directions. Left hand reaches forward, right hip reaches back. And then we can drop the hand down. Let's bend into the left leg, find your stance for high lunge. And then we're going to um, press into the ground and reach all the way up to this high lunge. The hands can come to the back, to the hips, reminding us to tuck our tailbone, shoulders can roll back, and we can lift the heart to the sky, maybe a baby back bend. And then let's reach forward, drop the hands to the mat, step the right foot back to make the left, and press up into downward facing dog. You got it. From here, we'll inhale the left leg high, bend that left leg, press under the arm for the hip opener. Inhale, through like a dog, left foot lifts. Exhale, draw the knee to the chest, pause. Three, 
two, crouching tiger. One, gently step the leg through, plant your blocks under the hands. And we'll reach forward with the left and spin ourselves open, taking that twist. Breathing here. You can stay or take the challenge. The right arm reaches forward. Nice, Jane. So much space. Two and one. And then we'll release both hands down to the blocks and straighten into that left leg, maybe shortening the stance so that the left, so the right heel can come down. And I'm going to roll my blocks to the higher setting so it's easier for me to keep my back flat. Core is engaged. And we're breathing. Finding the comfort of ease in this posture. And then let's reach the right arm forward and feel that opposing pull. Left hip is pulling back. The right hand is reaching forward. And then we'll return the right hand to the mat, bend into the left leg, preparing for high lunge. As we inhale, reach down and up, high lunge. You can stay with the hands lifted. You might bring the hands together and fold them behind the head and then lift the heart to the sky. And then we'll reach forward, down to the mat, remove our blocks, plant the hands, step back to plank, and take a vinyasa or knee in down dog. Listen to your body, go at your own pace, your own level. Finding the stillness. And downward facing dog. Let's look to the top of the mat. We walk or lightly hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold deeply. Toe feel the feet, hips distant. And we'll slide the palms face up under the hands for pada. So giving the wrists, the hands a little massage with the feet, bending the knees deeply here is fine. As you inhale, lengthen the spine against your body, the legs can stay bent. And as you exhale, fold the torso towards your knees. Up, chin, relax the neck, relax the shoulders, and breathe. And then let's release the hands. And we're going to um, bring the feet back together, hands to the heart, and we'll rise through Utkatasana. So bending the knees, the head lifts, so we'll return to this thunderbolt shape. Breathing for three, two, and one, rising all the way up to the sky, and releasing. Awesome flow. Okay, let's take the strap here, if you have it. So take the strap wider than um, hips distance, wider than shoulders distance, and you'll pull it taut. We'll stand feet at hip distance, tailbone is tucking, shoulders are rolling back. As we inhale, reach the strap forward and up to the sky. And then see if you can send it behind you for a little shoulder stretch. So we're not arching the back, we're still packing the tailbone and breathing. From here, let's take that shape to the right for our side body. So drawing the strap behind you and to the right. You might see if you can point the left toes or even balance on the right foot. 
and then we'll, nice, beautiful. Come back to center and we'll take that to the other side. So inhale, high, exhale, reach into the left, drawing your strap to the side, gaze under the right hand, maybe point the right toe to the right, maybe lift that toe and find balance. Breathing. Return to center and release the strap. Excellent. From here, we'll do a bit more balancing. So finding a stable position, lifting all 10 toes and returning them to the mat. That turns on the soles of the feet and helps us grip the mat. We'll breathe in here, sending weight into the left leg, exhaling. And then as you inhale, lift the right knee and we'll reach that strap to the ball of the toe. Pressing the ball of the toe forward. The strap is lengthened. The shoulders are on the back and we're balancing. So if you can to big toe pose, up the pattern to stop it. Okay. <laughs> From here, if you're feeling bold, switch the grip so your left hand is holding the strap. And then we're gonna take a twist to the right and your gaze, your drishti will move to the right. So press against your bind for balance, press into the mat for stability, twist your torso for flexibility. And then we'll come back to center. Amazing. Okay, stay with me. This time we're going to open to the right hand, left hand to the hip. We'll be here for three, two, and one. Release the strap, release the leg. Shake it out. <laughs> Excellent. All right, other side. So lifting all 10 toes, returning them to the mat, really kind of suctioning our feet onto the mat for stability. We'll inhale here, pressing into the right foot, exhale, and on the next breath in, lift the left knee, wrap the strap on the ball of the foot like we did at the beginning of practice, and then extend that foot forward. So you're holding the strap, standing up nice and tall, tailbone is tucking, you got it. Breathing. Uh, gaze is on a focal point, something not moving. You are welcome to stay here, or if you're going for the challenge, go to the strap in the right hand and slowly open, twisting to the left. I'm going to try it again. So opening to the left. Oh, this side is not. Today, the gaze moves to the left, and we balance for three, two, and one. Returning forward and maybe taking the next step, which is opening to the left, and breathing for three, two, and one. Jane rocks it, and then we release. When you're ready, and just shake it out. Excellent. So we can push the strap aside. Let's come to the top of the mat. We'll take a vinyasa to reset our spine and connect to our breath. Inhale, taking up space, lifting the heart to the sky. Exhale, hands together, holding deeply. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hold. Step back, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, Anukamuka. Exhale, Anukamuka. From here, we'll inhale the right foot high. Exhale, bend the knee and open the hip. If wild thing is in your practice, go ahead and take that. Roll to the outer edge of the left foot, 
resting the toes of the right, and then resting the heels to the side. And then returning to three-legged dog. Stepping the right foot all the way through. We'll inhale, lifting the right hand to the sky for the twist. You might extend the left arm forward, or you might bring hands to the heart and hook the left elbow to the right knee. Breathing for three, two, and one. Returning to center, hands to the mat or blocks. And we'll straighten into that right leg for our pyramid pose. Right leg draws back, left hip forward. Breathing here. And then we'll take the left arm, reach it forward, find the block, and let's plant it outside the right foot. As you inhale, twist open to the right. Revolved pyramid pose. And then we'll return to center. Bend into the right knee. We're going to go crazy. Plant the block on the high setting ahead of you. And as you inhale, spring forward. See if you can lift that back leg. Hand is on the block. You can stay here, or you might spin open, revolve half moon. And then return, hands to the mat, bend into the right leg, step back, plank, and skate of the adopted. From here, we'll lift the left leg high. Exhale, bending the leg, lifting the hip, gazing under. You can stay here or move into wild thing, rotating the right foot, planting the left, lifting hips to the sky, and reaching back to the ground. And then return to three legged dog. Gently step the left leg all the way through. As you inhale, reach the left arm forward and up for the twist. You have options. You can stay here. You can reach the right arm forward, or you can plant um, hands at the heart for prayer twist. Breathing for three, two. And one, beautiful Jane. Returning hands to the mat for blocks, straightening into that left leg, pyramid pose. So the core is engaging, shoulders are on the back, back is flat. Left hip is drawing back. Breathing. Find your block, take one on the outer side of the left foot. And then we'll inhale the right arm forward. So that duality we worked on before, reaching forward with the left, right hand back with the left hip. And then as you exhale, plant that right hand on the block and see if you can twist open to the left. Revolved pyramid. Yes. Breathing here, heart is opening, core is working and twisting out. Patterns, twisting out old patterns that don't serve us, making space for new. And then we'll return down towards the mat. We'll take bend into the left knee, plant this block in front of us, in front of the left foot. Bring up on the, bring up so the right um, leg lifts. The right hand will plant on that block. You can stay here or spin open, lifting the left hand to the sky. This is rotated half moon, artichoke awesome. Ooh, 
Yes. And then we'll spin our torso back to face the mat. Remove the blocks. Step gently back. Palms plant. Feet step back. Take a vinyaka or meet up and down dog. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Sigh it out the mouth. Bending the knees and dropping down into child's pose. The toes come to touch. Heel, sink back towards, keep hip, sink back towards the heels. Forehead rests on the mat. You can bring the hands together and fold them overhead for a tricep stretch. Sending the body love, sending the heart gratitude. Feeling a sense of accomplishment for a flow. Let's return the hands to the mat and just walk them to the right, off the side of the mat, side body stretch, reaching from the left fingertips to the left heel. Inhale through center. Exhale, walking them off the mat to the left. The right palm is on top of the left. So we're stretching the right side body. And then we'll inhale, returning to center. <clears throat> Let's um, step, sorry, step up to downward facing dog. And then we'll walk the feet forward and set them to the wide edges of the mat with the heels facing in. And then we'll lower the heels coming into the Lasana Garland pose. So let's tuck the chin here. The hands can be in prayer, or you might reverse the prayer, which is a nice wrist relief. And let's let the head fall to the right, chin to chest, head to the left, chin to chest. One more time, each side, pausing wherever you need. And then we'll release the hands, tense the fingers behind you, and sit onto the hips. Let the knees fall, forward, fall wide, feet together, hands can interlace, down to angle pose. From here, we'll extend the left leg long, sitting up nice and tall, and then hinging at the hips as we did at the beginning of practice, folding over that extended leg, walking the hands forward, and breathing. As you exhale, you can soften and round the shoulders reaching the head toward the knee. The right hand can reach for the foot. If you've got this easy peasy, you can reach for the outer, right hand can reach for the outer edge of the foot. And you might find with the left 
arm behind you, taking a little twist. Head coming to the outer edge of your neck. And then we'll reach the hands forward, engage the core, and then walk the hands up as we rise. With a flat back, bring the knee in to the chest. You can cross the right knee and bend the left here, and then wrap, taking a twist to the right. Now you hook the left elbow around that knee. And then we'll release, coming forward, returning to bound angle pose. Tucking the chin, lengthening the spine. Rolling the neck if it feels good. And then extends the right leg long. Sit up nice and tall. Hinge at the hips, walking the hands forward. Breathing here at your edge. And then rounding forward on an exhale, letting the head fall toward the knee. Take it to the same depth you took the other side. So if you reached for the outer edge of the foot and took the half bind, do that here. Release the hands to the mat, flatten the back, roll the shoulders to the back, and then we'll come up with a engaged core flat back. Bending the left knee in, cross it over the right leg, bend the right leg, and twist to the left. You can hook the elbow around the knee, deepen in your twist if that's available to you. And then we'll come back to um, center. See if you can extend the legs toward the feet toward the edges of the mat. This is Bohu Kasana, cow face pose. This is my least favorite pose. So I'm doing this pose today to let go of my habits of hating the pose. <laughs> So I invite you to not keep the pose. <laughs> so from here, we can sit up tall. You can reach the right hand up and reach it behind you. So here you might reach the hands toward the elbow, drawing the elbow closer to the center line. From here, the left hand reaches around and you're aiming to interlace fingers behind the back. If that's not possible, actually, this is a great time for a uh, strap. So you can also have the right hand bent holding the strap and the left hand behind you holding the strap or you can be interlacing. If you've got the interlace, you've got the legs, you got the cow face, we can hinge the hips, gently folding forward. And then we'll slowly come back to center. Let the hands go. Let the legs unwind. Let's come to a wide-legged um, seat. And we'll walk the hands forward <clears throat> for a little counter stretch. Slowing down the breath. And then let's walk ourselves up and let's put hands behind the back, fingers stick, feet. 
fingers face forward. And then we'll roll the shoulders back and lift the heart to the sky, inhaling. You can stay here or press into the hands and feet and lift the hips towards the sky. This is a version of reverse plank. And then we'll release. So we did the cross in one direction, now we're going to do it in the other direction. Now I have to remember. So let's place, I think it was the left leg was, we're going to cross the left leg, the knee in front, then the left leg, and then we'll stack the right over top. And I'm hoping that, I think this is right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so from here, we're preparing for go Kasana, or this is go Kasana legs. The feet are reaching toward the outer edges of the mat. The knees are kind of in front of the torso. This is a deep outer hip stretch in case you are wondering. So you can take your strap here and we'll reach it up and then the, the left hand will, the left hand will bend and you'll switch the grip and you can draw the strap down. You also, without a strap, you can bend the left elbow, maybe use your right hand to get it closer to the front of the line and then reach around with the right, trying to take that bind of the fingers behind you. If you've got all this and you're looking for more, we can hinge at the hips. Coming forward. And then release the arms, release the legs. We'll sit up nice and tall. We'll take that hold. Slowly coming back up. We'll bend legs. <clears throat> Finding tabletop. We'll, we'll move into pigeon pose. So to prepare, you can either do a cat cow or a full vinyasa. I'm going to take a vinyasa here. So starting in plank, pressing back heels, crown of the head reaches forward, core drops in. Slowly exhaling to chaturanga. Slowly lifting on an inhale. Heart lifts, upward facing dog. Exhale, slowly hip lead, downward facing dog. From here, we'll float the right leg to the sky. Exhale, the right knee to the right wrist. Using cross to support the right hip if it's lifted off the um, mat. So we scoot the left foot back. I'm gonna move my blanket here. So bringing the blanket under the hips. Scooting left foot back. And then sitting up tall, rolling the shoulders back, lifting the heart, gazing forward, looking into our future. You may close the eyes for a moment. Your new version of the holidays. And envision the joy, the love, and the sense of connection that you can cultivate in a new way this year. As you exhale, lengthen the spine, walk the hands forward. You can make a pillow of your hands or use a block to support the head or the torso here. I like to place a block under my um, chest and let the head fall, fall forward, resting on it. Recline and impose. Connect 
holding the face of the third eye with your hand under your block. Connecting intuition or connecting to our intuition. Reminding ourselves to listen to that inner voice that knows what is right, that knows what is comfortable, and that knows how to find you. Take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly press up, lifting the heart and the torso, removing any blocks, tucking the back toes, and lifting the right leg to the side. You might bend it and open the hip if that feels good. And then plant the right foot on the mat. Inhale, lifting the left leg to the sky. Exhale, bending the knee, taking the middle left wrist. Extending the right foot straight back on the hip and placing your support under your hips to make sure the hips are touching something in this pose. And then we'll lift the heart sitting up tall here, looking toward the future. Seeing ourselves in our new pattern, making habits that make sense for where we are in our lives now. As we Exhale, walk the hands forward, placing a block or any props to support the torso or the head. Dropping into our reclined pigeon, top of top of them. Taking a moment to feel gratitude for the practice in yoga. And taking a moment to think deeply about what it is that this practice brings into our lives. Take one more deep breath here. 
and then slowly press up, tucking the back toes, bending the foot to the sky, opening the hip. And then we drop down to our knees, roll onto the hips, extend the legs forward. I'm going to offer a restorative posture for Shavasana. If you have a bolster or pillow, you can place them behind you. So sitting here, you're going to place your supports right behind the back. And then you can use your blanket or pillow to give a little more lift right where your head is going to fall. And then you'll take both blocks, bring the soles of the feet together, and we'll support the legs with these blocks. So coming into a supported reclined balance of the toes. Slowly dropping back. Onto the bolster or cushion. This can be a stack of cushions. We want here, we want to feel completely supported. We're opening the heart, we're opening the hips passively, cultivating our deep sense of rest and relaxation. And let the palms fall open. Make sure the neck feels comfortable and protected. Closing the eyes. Today we work on twisting out old habits and old patterns that no longer serve us. And we do this practice as a way to make space for new opportunities and positive change and to clear the way to establish new healthy patterns in our lives. As we approach the end of one year and prepare to enter the next, it's a wonderful time to reflect on the year progress and to look into the future with hope and then open heart. So let's use this sense of openness, strength, and flexibility to establish some new patterns and invite in new opportunities for growth. Shabbat. You're welcome to stay here and rest in pose for as long as you like. If you're ready to draw the practice to a close, I invite you to bring a small 
Bending the legs long. Carefully rolling off of your supports. And coming onto one side, pausing in stillness for a moment. Just absorbing the sensations of rest. As you're ready, gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Hands can be in the lap. We'll take a deep breath in together through the nose, expand in the body with fresh, nourishing breath. And sighing it out. We'll bring hands to heart center, bowing the head here. And thanks, feeling gratitude for the practice of yoga, gratitude for the support systems that have brought us together in this practice today. And let's send some love and open heartedness to those in our lives who we usually connect to at this time of year. Understanding that our connection will look different. And with that is an opportunity to cultivate a new sense. So we can place our hands over our heart, bringing to mind the loved ones, and taking a deep breath. Hands can come to prayer at the third eye, and we'll bow together, thankful to share this practice with one another. Namaste.